بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد when doing any amal we need to make sure we make an intention that I am going to do it till my last breath but you certain circumstances people's amal loses the nur because it's of outside factors and not the internal factor and strength so somebody might have a very powerful lawnmower, a branded lawnmower, they might have a very fast car, but if there's no current, if the battery in the car is not connected, it's not going to work. The battery of life is ikhlas, how sincerely I do this amal. So if it's the time Ramadan, my life is not going to change only for Ramadan, I'm making a need forever. If it is a certain place, whether in Mecca, Medina or at home, I'll make my house like Medina Munawara. I'll make my house like Mecca to Makarama. Likewise, individuals. Our deen should not be based on individuals. Sometimes a student is behaving because the teacher is in class. So his behavior is because of the teacher, not because he's well behaved. Somebody spies in front of their sheikh. Somebody is pious or good or make a fuss of their eyes in front of their wife or vice versa. Children are good in front of their parents. But the Kamal is when you're in solitude, when you're alone and you know and you have this yaqeen that my Allah is watching me. Alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara. Because this amal is for Allah, the army, the commander and the command is believing men and women, in absorim, they lower their gaze. Now it is not because somebody else is near me, I'm behaving. When 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 you're in front of people, when your chats are visible, how do you behave? And in solitude alone, watch your actions. So even sin, besides istiqamat in amal and consistency in amal. We will have consistency in iqat and abstinence from sin when we have this diyan and the awareness of Allah that 24 hours of the day Alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara My Allah is watching me One Ustad gave his, student, uh, his students in the class an assignment to go and slaughter a chicken where nobody was watching Some went in the basement, some went in the mountains, some, every student tried whatever he thought so, nobody was watching him. All the students came and gave their report. One student said, oh, start. Everybody laughed at him because he never slaughtered his chicken. So in inquiry, why did you not slaughter a chicken? He said, oh, start. I searched everywhere. I went in the basements. I went in solitude. I went in the mountains. I looked everywhere. I never found a place where my Allah was not watching me. So that Diyan and that awareness, my Deen should not be based and restricted on the people and company that is around me. In a time of Umar when he was making gusht and the command was that it is forbidden to mix water with milk was it Umar radiallahu anhu overheard a mother and daughter speaking where the mother instructs the daughter that mix water? Ulama explained that the mother instructed the daughter to test the daughter. So sometimes we need to test our children. We need to test the people around us. Leave that chocolate in front and see if your child takes it. Is that Diyan in awareness of Allah there? That my parent is not here but is Allah watching me? So anyway, the daughter said that, Oh mother, don't you know that it is forbidden? Amirul Mu'minin has passed a decree. We cannot mix water with milk. Even though you did it in the days of ignorance, now it is not permissible. So the mother said, and again testing the daughter, that Omar is not here. Omar is not watching. So the daughter replied that, Ma kuntu li uti'ahu fil mala. Is it possible that when I'm in public, I obey Allah, and when I'm in solitude, I disobey Allah? If Umar is not watching, 
us, then the Rabb of Umar is watching us. The Rabb of Umar is seen my every action and I have the fear of Allah. So Umar radiallahu anh and his different riwayat based on his companions or his sons, he addressed him and saying that he was told that give her a reward. He said the, the best reward for somebody like this is something greater. And he married his son Asim to this girl. They were summoned. The mother was uh, worried and concerned. And as Umar proposed his son for her marriage. And from that progeny, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought Umar al Thani, Umar bin Abdul Aziz. When I'm doing this guna, when I'm doing the sin, my Allah is watching me. When I'm doing this good deed, somebody is reading Salat. We read slowly. What a beautiful tune. Why? Because the Majma is listening to us. Now we read in Salat at home. I'm reading for the family. Everybody is hearing me. I'm reading for my Ustad, they're hearing me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hearing me. How do I read my Quran in front of Allah? Once Sheikh Sadi was traveling and after a long journey he reached a city, there was a famous Amir. People were going there for a Dawat, so he went there. As he entered the place, the security guard stopped him because he was very dusty, his clothes were old and tattered, and he chased him away. Nobody gave him any attention. So he decided to make the Islam of this Amir. He went and he hired brand new clothing of the most highest quality. He had himself groomed and he went to the tower. Then the security guard didn't ask any questions. He went in, people were making salam to him. Even the Amir kissed his hand. At the time of meals, everybody sat down. Sheikh Sari took the food and rubbed his clothes. Everybody was shocked. Such a noble person. What are you doing? So he explained, Sheikh Sadi said, this is the work of guidance. This is the work of guidance. When I came previously, nobody looked at me, I was chased away. Now everybody's making salam to me. You're not making salam to me, you're making salam to my clothing. So that Amir apologized and he said, who are you? He said, Saadi. Sheikh Saadi was quite famous, a Shirazi. Are you Saadi from Shiraz? Then he asked, Sheikh Sadi for Maf. So sometimes based on the situation and, and the halat and the conditions, do we practice on deen? We should not be affected by halat and conditions and people. Speaking about Umar radiallahu anhu once, when the people of Jerusalem wanted to meet the Amirul Mu'minin of the Muslims, then Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu came they were ready to uh, effect a truce based on meeting Amir al muminin And they had details in the scriptures, so they wanted to verify, is this the person that's going to take over and uh, we give him the keys? So Zulamar was with his slave, his clothes were tattered, he had a camel, he used to ro ro rotate, means the camel used to ride it, and then he used to give the slave opportunity to ride the camel. So imagine Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu pulling the, the rope of the camel and the slave is on the camel. People are wondering who's the Amir? So they came to a place where it was very muddy. Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu took out his shoes, removed his shoes, put it on his shows, shoulders. And uh, his clothing became messed with mud. So uh, Hazrat Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah, who was uh, Amir, the commander of the, the, the Muslims at the time, said that, Oh, Umar, you are Amirul Mu'minin, and are you doing this here? لَقَدْ فَعَلْتَ يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فَعْلًا عَظِيمًا in the Ahlil Ard. Is it possible that you have done this, and the people will see you in this condition? فَسَكَّ عُمَرُ بِيَدِي فِي صَدْرِ أَبِي أُبَيْدَةِ Hazrat Umar literally punched, he nudged Hazrat Abu Ubaida in the chest and said, Allah, what's wrong with you? 
لو غيرك يقولها يا أبا أبيدا أو أبو أبيدا if it was somebody else and someone else besides you جعلته نكالا I would have set an example I would have taught him a lesson أو أبو أبيدا what are you saying إنا كنا أذل قوم we were the most disgraced people on earth أنتم كنتم أقل الناس وأذل الناس you were small in number you were disgraced فعزكم الله بالإسلام الله then honored you and gave you honor through Islam فمهما تتلب العزة بغيره يذلكم الله if you search if you look for honor anywhere else on earth any other way any other pattern any other system besides the pattern of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will disgrace you so when they entered the city and the people seeing the descriptions of Umar radiallahu they gave him the keys of the city without a sword being lifted without one drop of blood being spilt because as Umar Yalom matched the criteria and the description in the books. So, wherever I am, whoever I am with, I need to check all the time. Alam ya'alam bi anna Allah yara. In the time of Umar radiallahu an, there was a youngster who was always in the masjid. And as Umar radiallahu an loved him. As Umar radiallahu an loved him. And he had an elderly father. So whenever he used to read uh, Salat al-Isha, he used to go and make khidmat of his father. And on the way, there was a lady who, after seeing him, fell in love with this youngster. So she should make herself known. Every day when he used to pass, she tried to make herself known. And one day, he passed that house and she tried to entice him. And he fell for that. So he entered the house. And as he entered and he was alone with her, one ayat of the Quran came to mind. That those people who have taqwa and the fear of Allah, they have the diyan, they have the awareness of Allah. When shaitan whispers to them, they remember Allah. They don't remember the whispering of shaitan. They don't follow that whispering. They don't follow it up. The text came, that message came, that wink came. You don't follow it up with a second message. Because you know that's shaitan. You don't see the shaitan, but you know behind it there is a shaitan. فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ And they take lesson. They retract. They make Toba. This youngster fell unconscious. So this young girl called her assistant and she panicked. So they decided that they'll take this boy to their father's house and they put him by the door of the house, knocked on the door and left. When the father opened, he was there at the door unconscious. So he called all the family, they took him inside. And when this boy gained consciousness later in the night, his father said, Ya Punaya, Ma Laka, oh my beloved son, what has happened? What's the story? The son said, Khairun, oh my beloved father, some good has happened. Fa'inni as'aluka billahi, I am asking you for the sake of Allah. So he wasn't, he wasn't giving him the story. And the father insisted, tell me what's the story. أي بني وأي آية قرأت؟ Oh my son, tell me what's the story. So the son narrated it to him and narrated this آية. إن الذي نتقوا إذا مسهم طائفهم that the people of Allah when Shaitan inspires them and whispers thoughts they remember Allah and retract. فخر مخشيا عليه as he recited this ayah, he fell unconscious. The father tried again. فَإِذَا هُوَ مَيِّتٌ 
and this boy's Ruh had left. And as the father had asked him and he was conscious, then he said, Oh my father, Fakra minni as Give my salams to Umar radiallahu anhu. وَقُلْ لَهُ and tell him مَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ What is the reward of the person who fears standing before Allah? While he's in this world, he's got the awareness that I am going to be answerable to Allah in the day of Qiyamah. So, this rule left. So the father prepared, the ghusl was done, the kafan tadfin, he was buried. In the morning, this incident went to Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu. So he came to visit to the father. He visited the father and said, Why did you not inform me of what had transpired? So the father said, Ya Amir al Mu'minin, kind of late, and it was night, it was late. I didn't want to trouble you. So Umar and once said, Fadhabu bina ala qabrihi. Let's go quickly and go to his qabr. فَأَتَاعُ عُمَرْ وَمَنْ مَعَهُ Everybody came with Umar to the Qabr. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّةً Those people who fear standing in front of Allah. We can remember the boy said, Give Umar my salams and tell him that what is the reward for those people who fear Allah? Umar radiallahu anhu at the Qabr of this boy said, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّةً Whoever fears Allah, Allah will give them two jannats. فَأَجَابَهُ الْفَتَى مِنْ دَاخِلِ الْقَبْرِ This narration is in Hakim. The youngster Allah gave him a voice. And from the qabr he said, يَا عُمَرُ قَدْ أَعْطَانِيهِمَا رَبِّي فِي الْجَنَّةِ مَرَّتَيْنِ Definitely I can conquer with you, oh, Umar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me two jannats. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me the two jannats which you tell me about. So we need to check ourselves all the time that this amal that I'm doing, is it because of the situation and the circumstances that we, is around us? Or are we doing it for the pleasure of Allah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.